It's now been a week since Tuesday's election and days since the election has been called for Joe Biden. But yet, unsurprisingly, Donald Trump is refusing to concede. And if you look at his Twitter timeline, all you see is pure delusion where tweet after tweet has been flagged because he is actively spreading misinformation. He's made countless unsubstantiated claims about voter fraud and dead people voting and legal versus illegal votes. But none of this is true. And it's over. Regardless if he chooses to accept that it's over or not, it's over. And this is getting really embarrassing because what we're seeing basically is a toddler who is refusing to accept that something didn't go his way. And the worst part is that even people closest to him, like Jared Kushner and his own wife, Melania Trump, have reportedly talked to him about conceding, and those closest around him have been considering even staging an intervention to try to get him to come to his senses. But still, that doesn't necessarily matter because a lot of people around him, his closest aides, they are in fact buying into his delusions. And he is refusing to personally acknowledge that he lost. And according to people in his inner circle, right now, conceding isn't even on the table. And at this point, it just sounds like he may never concede. And I think that Vanity Fair put it best. It really sounds like Trump is maybe going to barricade himself in the Oval Office and choose to never concede, even though that would be highly entertaining, even if that is dangerous for democracy. Uh, I think that the more likely scenario is that he's never going to concede in any formal capacity as we expect an incumbent president to concede after he lost. But what I do think is that begrudgingly, he's going to leave, probably not go to Joe Biden's inauguration. And that's that. He will go out with a whimper because he doesn't have a choice. You don't just get to choose to unilaterally invalidate the results of a general election. If you're going to try to do that, you need evidence. Anything, like even a shred of evidence. But, you know, here's the thing that's sad. He knows deep down that it's over. He knows that it's over. There's been reports that apparently he's binge eating fast food. You know, that's what I do when I feel down. But he knows it's over. Deep down, I think that he knows that this is over for him. The sad part is that he's making it impossible for his own supporters to move on. Now, these are grown-ups, right? They, they have the option to either choose to live in reality with the rest of us or choose to put their feelings over facts. The main thing that's keeping hope alive is that people have deluded themselves into thinking that Donald Trump's lawsuits are going to somehow lead to all of the mail-in ballots being invalidated or some states being called in favor of Donald Trump that have already been called for Joe Biden. I don't necessarily know what the end goal is, but it's not going to result in Donald Trump winning this election because his campaign has already filed multiple lawsuits in numerous states and many of them have already been dismissed. And the few legal victories that he's had have been small inconsequential procedural wins where he asks for more oversight, more like campaign officials to observe the ballot counting process and that's granted to them but in terms of like invalidating ballots as he tried to do in georgia i think he his campaign filed a lawsuit to invalidate i believe 53 ballots that's the number i mean what do you expect what do you expect to happen it's over it is absolutely over. And I remember back in 2016, when the liberals were really upset that Hillary Clinton lost, they hung on to everything. Hopes that the recounts in Pennsylvania would flip it in Hillary's favor. Hopes that, you know, there would be some rogue electors that, since she won the popular vote, maybe they just choose to vote against what their state did. It never happened. And it's not going to happen for Donald Trump. And the faster that his supporters accept it, the faster that you can all move on with your lives. But the problem is that you have individuals who support Donald Trump with large platforms who are reinforcing this narrative that Donald Trump somehow did win and this victory was stolen. Individuals like Tommy Loren, for example, who tweeted out, never underestimate the lengths the left will go to take control. But that being said, never underestimate Donald Trump. It's not over, except it is over. It is over. What are you expecting? Like, let's say best case scenario for Donald Trump. After having this recount in Georgia, he ends up winning Georgia. Okay, then what? Because Joe Biden still won Nevada, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. There is no path to victory. Joe Biden will become the 46th president of the United States, like it or not. And for individuals who are saying, oh, well, you know, 
this election was fraud. You know, Democrats rigged it. Listen, I'm not going to say that there's never been rat fuckery in American elections because, of course, that is a thing. But election fraud is a more common phenomenon than voter fraud. The voter fraud rate is literally 0.0025%. It is statistically insignificant. It doesn't happen enough to change the results of an election to the extent that it does occur and it's been proven that somebody has committed voter fraud. And then you see Donald Trump making this distinction between legal votes and illegal votes. The votes that are being counted are legal votes. They're trying to contend that lots and lots of dead people are voting. Dead people remaining on the rolls after they die is not evidence of voter fraud. People die all the time who are registered to vote, and they don't vote. My father passed away this year. He was a registered voter. He could not vote. It's not nefarious that he may still be on the voter rolls. At some point, he will be purged once it is learned that he's been deceased. Okay? That's the way that it works. And also, he didn't even see, receive a ballot. So there's nothing nefarious going on here. This is delusions that we're talking about here. And the problem is that Donald Trump wants everyone else to buy into his delusions because in the event he can convince enough people that really this election was stolen from him, then maybe that can make a difference, but it's not going to make a difference. Screaming about it at the top of your lungs is not going to change the results of this election. It is over. O-V-E-R. It is fucking over. Fuck your feelings. Sometimes elections go your way, other times they don't. And this is one of those elections where Donald Trump doesn't have a goddamn leg to stand on. Now you see some individuals like Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch say, well, why don't we just have Republicans appoint electors that can vote on Donald Trump's favor since there is you know, so much fraud. And this is something that we talked about before this election. The problem is that the states that Joe Biden won, they're controlled by Democrats in the key swing states that he did in fact win. So when you have Democrats in control of Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, they're not going to go for that. They're not going to say, oh, well, you say fraud. Let's just go ahead and send in some electors that are favorable to Trump and overturn the will of the people. And even if you believed that Democrats cheated, why would they be stupid enough to rig the presidential election but not rig the House and the Senate races? They actually lost ground in the House. We don't even know if they'll take back the Senate. Why wouldn't they at least rig the election between Amy McGrath and Mitch McConnell. Like, it doesn't make sense. You just have to think about this logically for a couple of minutes. If Democrats were able to pull something like this off, why would they allow Republicans to retain control of the Senate? Again, this is delusional. This is delusional. Donald Trump and his supporters can try to craft some reality that they want to live in. Individu individuals like Tommy Loren, she can try to say, you know what, I believe in Donald Trump and what he's saying here, and maybe there is some fraud. Republicans can try to back him up by kind of tap dancing around whether or not he did in fact lose this election, which he did. But they're lying to you. If you're a Trump supporter, these individuals are lying to you. Tommy Loren knows that since her base is comprised largely of pro-Trump people, if she comes out and says, Trump lost, I'm sorry, it sucks, I was rooting for him, but he lost, they're going to lash out at her. Because these people live in their own alternate reality. And when you try to penetrate that bubble that they've built for themselves, they lash out at you. So you'll see grifters like Tommy Loren, Republicans like Mitch McConnell say, oh, well, of course Donald Trump legally can challenge the results because technically that's true. But everyone is afraid to say what's the truth, to say what is factual. And that's really sad. Like, what a sad state of affairs. I mean, sure, it's damaging that Trump is, you know, trying to delegitimize the results of this election and wants to unilaterally get it invalidated, which he can't do. And that's bad for democracy, even if it may be a little bit entertaining. But the saddest part about all of this is that every Republican who's close to Donald Trump is lying to you. If you're a Trump supporter, what do you gain from not believing reality? What do you gain from pretending as if he still has a shot? It is over. So the faster that you accept the results, the faster you can move on with your own life. And I think that most people who support Donald Trump, they probably acknowledge that the writing is on the wall. It's just, you know, the diehards who are going to cling to this hope, even if it's fading, that he's going to be the president. But this is just sad and pathetic. You know, it's something that is going to be increasingly common in a post-factual era. But it's incumbent on all of us to try to make sure that facts matter.
as Ben Shapiro would say, facts don't care about your feelings. And that's the truth. I wish that he actually followed that philosophy more closely, but I mean, it, it doesn't matter what you want to be true. The fact is that Donald Trump lost this election. Now, you can let him go down crying and screaming and embarrass himself, or you can choose to be a grown-up and not believe his delusions. It's up to you. Tremendous, 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 tremendous